My name is Scott Thorpe. I'm with the law firm of Kunzler IP, and today I'm going to be talking about cease and desist letters. Oftentimes, if you're in business and you get a cease and desist letter, it's a very traumatic experience because basically someone is suing you, often for a lot of money, or threatening to sue you. So I'm going to be talking about the things you need to think about and the things you need to do. And the first one is don't panic. Cease and desist letters are rarely in, in the company's life. They can be dealt with. We deal with them all the time. But there's a few things you need to examine in the letter to figure out what your strategy is. And the first one is, who is sending you the letter? Now, there's a couple of different kinds of people that we could be threatening to sue you for infringing their patents. The first one would be a patent troll. A patent troll is a pejorative uh, name for a company that doesn't make products, but all they do is hold and license intellectual property. Now, if a troll, a so-called troll, threatens to sue you, they're not trying to shut you down. That's the last thing they want. They want you to keep on making money and send them regular checks. So, if, if the who is a troll, then you need to realize that with their goal in this whole thing is to minimize their upfront costs and to maximize their payout. They are not going to want to go to trial with you. They are not going to want to uh, spend a lot of money. All they want is a quick and profitable resolution. Now, if the who is a competitor, that's an entirely dif different situation. A competitor may want you to exit the business or they may want you to pay a very large punitive royalty to them. And so that's an entirely different problem. Uh, if that is what's happening, if a competitor is suing you, then you need to move on to the why. Why are they, why are they suing your particular company or threatening to sue you and not someone else? Well, there's a couple of reasons they might pick you. Number one is they might have selected you because they want an easy victory. This is particularly true of small companies. If a large company threatens to sue you and sends you a cease and desist letter, it may be because they want to set an example, to set a precedent. And in those cases, the large company is often very, very willing to settle for very easy terms, such as a zero dollar royalty, in order to get you, in order to be able to re uh, issue a press release that, that they settled this case. And that would simply be to encourage other companies to settle in the same way. Now, they might never release the terms of the settlement, so no one knows that you settled for nothing. But often these cases are settled very easily. Next, you need to look at what they're, what they're threatening to sue you with. If someone is threatening you with a patent infringement suit, you need to look at their patent. Now, most companies or most people aren't uh, trained to look at the claims and see whether or not they're infringing. But you can look at the date. If it's a fairly old patent, something that, say, was issued before 2007, you can be pretty sure that the law has changed a great deal since that patent was issued. And as a result, that patent is very likely to be invalidated if it ever goes to court. In fact, about half the patents that are actually tried in court are, end up being invalidated. So it's a good idea to look at just what they're claiming that you're infringing and how old that patent is because there's a good chance that they might not have a strong case. Finally, the fact that you got a, a cease and desist letter rather than have a, a, an infringement action filed against you is a good sign that the other side is willing to settle. If they, if they haven't, uh, file the case, that means that they would prefer to settle and settle quickly rather than uh, pick a venue such as the Eastern District of Texas with which to sue you and so um, and start the case immediately. Because if they send you a cease and desist letter, you have an option of actually, of actually uh, filing a, a preemptory action and picking your venue. So the, just the fact that you got a letter rather than, rather than uh, had a, were sued in court 
indicates that they're not that concerned about where, and there's, you're likely to get the case settled. So these are some things to think about when you get a cease and desist letter uh, that alleges that you violated or that you infringed someone's patent. Remember, the key thing is don't panic.